Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. Happy Saturday morning. We have Chris Harrison, former host of The Bachelor, responding to the boss who fired him after hiring him 20 years later. Uh, we have the story Mike Fleiss uh, was ousted from The Bachelor, and now the chips are falling. We're getting all the different stories. I'm going to share with you a couple uh, clips um, from Chris Harrison's podcast, what he has to say about the moment he met Mike Fleiss and what he thinks about it all going down. Chris Harrison actually says, and we'll play this for you, that one of the prerequisites of Chris Harrison even coming back as host, not that that's going to happen, would be that Mike Fleiss is gone, and so that's the case. The Bachelor loses its cold, black heart. For two decades, Mike Fleiss was the twisted genius behind the Bachelor franchise. With his exit this week following an investigation into racial discrimination in casting, details are emerging on a consensus member of reality TV's all-star A-hole team. I'm going to read some clips from that on the Variety article, which dropped yes, uh, the last couple of days, they had a few different articles. Very interesting stuff. Tammy from The Bachelor says, pretends to be shocked. Chris Conran from The Bachelor, no surprises here. Jen Posner says, but Mike Fleiss stayed after the racial discrimination lawsuit I wrote about in 2012 for The Daily Beast. Not to mention the racism he baked into the DNA of the franchise, which I documented and analyzed extensively in my book, Reality Bites Back. So a lot of people are saying, hey, We've known about this for a decade. Um, one, uh, one, uh, Paul, what's that? What's the name? Juan Paul, uh, Pablo, Juan Pablo, Juan Pablo, former bachelor, also comments. Sorry, I just lost it there, which is, uh, you know, a big thing to have a former lead. I knew it from day one. It was a matter of time. Chris's mouth got him first, but Mike was the mastermind behind everything, including racism, bullying, and creating a disrespectful working environment. Now the show will have true love stories, respecting beliefs, and how each culture expresses love. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens on the show. Let's go to Chris Harrison's Instagram story, then I'm going to play a couple of clips of what Chris Harrison has to say, and he also interviewed the guy who wrote this article about Mike Fleiss. So we'll check that out. Have a listen. Hey, everybody. What it's up? late Thursday night, and this has been a wildly emotional day and an emotional week. I just finished recording my second podcast on the departure of... Mike Fleiss. All right, so he's emotional. It's a um, everybody. It is 11 p.m. here in Austin, and Chris. Not 11 p.m. Harrison just recorded another episode of the most dramatic. Oh my gosh! Can we get Chris Harrison a gold star for recording two episodes? By the way, the second episode is 15 minutes long. I have recorded longer episodes while sitting on the toilet, guys. But either way, I'm going to play that in a second. But let's go back to this story. We really see all the different aspects of the uh, departure of Mike Fleiss coming from someone saying that he was waging war on his Malibu neighbor that included loud barking sounds emanating from loud speakers in the wee hours of the morning. I have to say, I'd like to know what his neighbor did to cause him to want to do that. I'm not going to just side with the neighbor on this one. You know what I mean? Um, but then other accounts, of course, uh, producer Sally Ann left the show after its early success. Mike Flex vowed to destroy her, according to two sources who worked on Bachelor. Instead, she created Jersey Shore and sold her company to Fremantle for millions. Um, uh, da, da, da. There's other stories here. Um, uh, amazing to think that there wasn't a black bachelor until Matt James in 2021, a situation that spun out of control and led to host Chris Harrison's exit and no black lead at all until Rachel Lindsay in 2017. In recent years, the bachelor show have waned. So the whole thing about how the show's gone downhill, um, which, you know, is, is up to for debate, you know, based on, you know, all, all shows are kind of being niched and cut down and all that. Um, but either way, uh, Fleiss in his ridiculous farewell statement praised the choice of Claire Freeland, Jason Ehrlich, and Bennett Grabner as the show's new shepherds, as if Fleiss himself was the showrunner being replaced. But those hires are also raising eyebrows because others who have been with the franchise longer had wanted a shot at the top jobs. Um... Uh, th there's going to be more on the on the politics of it all. This this isn't the most bombshell article. It's a lot of like, well, sources say this, sources say that, but it's all fascinating stuff when you look at the behind the scenes of the creator of the show. Um, other Bachelor employees are looking at their own possible claims and have engaged attorney, power attorney, Brian Friedman, same lawyer that represented Chris Harrison in his exit from the show and also represented Cassidy Randolph, um, uh, sorry, Cassie Randolph, uh, when, of course, she was dealing with her ex-boyfriend, uh, Colton Underwood, who had uh, stalked and harassed her. Uh, Susie Ahrens, Mike Fleiss' publicist, declined to comment, as did Warner Brothers and ABC. Um, um, doo -doo -doo. So that's all they got there, folks. That's all they've got. Now, of course... 
they discussed some other aspects of what went down that also led to Mike Fleiss being labeled a bad guy. But um, uh, there isn't too much in this article. I was actually surprised. I mean, it's just a more so an opinion piece, but obviously with some unnamed sources. So let's go to the two different uh, podcasts from Chris Harrison. And this is uh, the first we're going to get to. Um, you know, we're going to go through all the ads that are here. By the way, he had like... 10 minutes of ads in a 15 minute episode. I'm not judging him, but it's like, holy cow. Did they, did, can we set up a GoFundMe for Chris Harrison? So he doesn't have to do so many ads, but here we have Chris Harrison talking about the moment he met Mike Fleiss and the meeting was horrible. I mean, it was a disaster. Mike and I <laughs> hated each other. It was like oil and water. Really? Yeah, it was. I mean, the worst How meeting. How do you hate someone in a meeting? What happened? We just it, we just didn't get along. Honestly, jo so my son Josh had just been born. He was like six weeks old. I was so tired. I think I probably had spit up on my jacket. So he talks about coming in, um, not being exactly, a, a, you know, looking as sharp as could be. And then we get some character descriptions of Mike Fleiss being very Hollywood. Up in my suit and tie, you know, hair combed, combed over and, um, you know, typical ready for a job interview. And Mike Fleiss is kind of this large man that wears sunglasses indoors and, and wears flip-flops and a black. I wear my sunglasses. Under. We're like Texas, wear so a collared I shirt. Can. And he was like, LA, I'm in my flip-flops. Yeah, All right, he's an LA guy. We get that. Not a big deal. Um, I don't think Chris Harrison lays any true haymakers on Mike Fleiss. My guess being is that Mike Fleiss probably has, you know, it, it feels like it would be like mutually assured destruction. Like they probably, after 20 years of working together, they probably could share stories about each other. My guess, and I don't have any proof of this. My guess is whenever they go to Estonia, they're going to the local strip club looking for some drugs. This is just my guess is this is the type of stuff that would go down. Um, just... Just thinking if I, you know, if I were to think of a reality show that travels Europe with a whole bunch of good looking people, that's my guess. All right. Uh, let me know what you think. I could be completely wrong. Maybe he's a very boring guy. I mean, he was recording a podcast at 11 p.m. All right. Here's how Chris would come back to the show. I said this before when the rumors came out that were swirling several weeks ago about ABC or whoever the network talking about bringing me back or asking me to come back. And I said at that time, which of course they immediately vehemently denied that they were thinking about that. Never say never. But I also said at that time, there were some things that would have to happen. Um, and it's not just financially. There are things that would have to change and things that would have to happen. I can say one of those things has happened. Yeah. And that is that the creator of The Bachelor has been fired. Okay, but Chris Harrison, here's the problem. Jesse Palmer's doing a great job as the host. What will be interesting to see is now that we've got Mike Fleiss gone, will there actually be a change in tone on the show? Mike Fleiss wasn't really, as far as I know, doing too much with the sh respect to the show. He was kind of like in charge of picking out the leads, which, you know, could be a big deal um, moving forward. But let's, let's go to a few of the clips here of Chris Harrison interviewing... Uh, the guy who wrote that article who's been following this story. So this is going to be some fascinating stuff. Bombshell article written by Matt Bellany, a journalist who has an industry newsletter called The Puck. And he is also the host of an industry podcast called The Town. How everyone helped him. And, you know, he's very excited about the future. And it's the right time to step down. So I learned this week that that wasn't the case. You came out in this article. Mm -hmm. And the headline reads, The Bachelor Loses Its Cold Black Heart. Your first sentence, a round of applause on the Warner Brothers lot is probably in order for <laughs> She's the Warner Brothers attorney who investigated this. What made you feel so comfortable coming out firing in this article? Well, Fleiss is one of those no notorious figures. And it's weird talking to you about this because I know you're not allowed to talk about it, but sort of. I know it's very true. Like Chris Harrison does a pretty good job of not violating whatever uh, NDA he signed or whatever here. He doesn't get too personal here. Um, but uh, boy, the chips are falling for old Mikey Flex. And and I got to give credit to Chris Harrison where it's due on the naming of these podcasts. He's calling it dropping like flies, you know, like dropping like flies. Pretty good. Oh, you know, and you can't say this stuff. Um, I can because obviously I'm. Uh, not involved with the show in any way. 
But he was a pretty notorious figure in the reality TV community, um, known as just kind of being a jerk and vindictive. And of course, being a jerk doesn't necessarily get you fired. Racial discrimination would. So they go on to discuss a little bit more of the substance of um, what actually is going down behind the scenes. So now three three articles have dropped. There's the uh, Variety article, a Deadline article has dropped about an ABC deal. You and I are going to get to that here in just a little bit. Um, and of course, your article that is in... Um, uh, on puck, and- which by the way, I spent twelve dollars to read this, and I and, and there's no offense to him. I'm all about you know like uh, getting paid to do your work here, but we don't get any sort of breaking news. Just a couple character descriptions of a guy that um, is not having a good week. And I'm sure we'll be talking about it on your podcast, The Town. You know, one thing I can say is it was interesting when I even when I was on the show and then afterwards, when I would go into meetings, pitch meetings, what have you, people would always stop and say, okay, but first you got to tell us stories. You got to tell us what was it really like? There really was. And I, and I take it, this is what I want to hear from you because you are known industry wide. What was the feeling? What do you, what was the idea of Mike Fleiss out there? He was this dark genius that people believed had an idea originally for a show that cut through there were a million dating shows all right so they go to discuss his dark genius which wouldn't that be nice power recap or dark genius uh but um of course you know he had his big hit this was his big cash cow and he created multiple versions of the show and this and that uh but um okay keep it going. Why were they trying to that? distance in that statement why were they trying in in your mind as a lawyer putting on your lawyer hat because okay. i know you are why try to distance him from the franchise like that? Well, there's there's controversies that have played out over the past decade. I mean, namely the show, there was a, a discrimination complaint filed against the show claiming that it systematically excluded black people. And there were the personal scandals that he had. I mean, he was um, he was accused of, of beating his pregnant wife, which he has denied. Um, he got into this fight with his neighbor in Malibu where he allegedly was playing loud barking noises in the middle of the night um and you know maybe he was just playing the song who let the dogs out you know what i mean who let the dogs out oh, 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 oh. but maybe the first part they couldn't hear and all they could hear was oh, oh, oh. you know it's a good song um who sang who let the dogs out venga boys no what, what, okay it doesn't matter you can leave a comment uh maybe you're a big fan all right last part was offered an overall deal at abc mm-hmm. that's the report and you and Deadline both have said that overall deal is dead. All right. So very obvious. Not too much to report here. But I got to tell you, if we want to hear from anyone who talks about the firing of Mike Fleiss, it is Chris Harrison. Chris Harrison has been sort of the uh, the figurehead of, of the show who speaks on the policies. I always look at Chris Harrison in one way or another as like a press secretary. So if we didn't like president the president's policies this would be like we fired the press secretary for that do you know what i mean chris harrison um obviously spoke out of line and made mistakes but it is important for us to remember he was just the face of a bigger problem and so many times in different um uh, organizations when someone's fired it's kind of like a just a superficial like figurehead thing well we have to can somebody and then they don't change anything now mike fleiss is out and we'll have to see with charity season but probably more so the season after that probably bachelor in paradise will be the first season we'll have to see with new showrunners and new blood in in the uh, decision making process will anything change my guess is subtle at best subtle and small changes we'll have to see how it all plays out leave a comment and if you want, I mean, come on, I'm making you know, some Saturday free videos here. Go to patreon.com slash Dave Neal and throw some bread in the tip jar. Or at the very least, for free, every afternoon, check out Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast. You can binge all of the old episodes, stream them for free on your phone. Link in the comment section to do that. All right, folks, have a good weekend. Do something I wouldn't do. And then some. Bye, everyone.